Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Oh, hello there. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeeper Association. My name is Austin. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Not much else need to be said. With it being the most well-known and most popular dinosaur throughout the world, no doubt that when one resurrects this species, it's going to be very popular in any zoological facilities it is kept in. When, when that's done, you'll need to make certain that the T-Rex is well taken care of, health-wise and welfare-wise. Which, like one could probably tell, would definitely be one heck of a challenge. When taking care of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, this 40 foot long, 12, 13 tall, and between 9 to 11 ton reptile, you definitely gotta consider a lot of things. One good thing to start on the T-Rex is on health. You gotta make certain that the T-Rex is healthy, especially you gotta know what, el what elements that the Tyrannosaurus would face in the 21st century and in a captive environment. Considering that these animals are extinct and died out so long ago, it won't be easy. But there are a few things that we can base our assumptions on. One source that we can use is the fossil record. While the fossil record is incomplete and fragmentary at best, the Tyrannosaurus is perhaps the most well-studied dinosaur of all, of all time. We've been able to find enough specimens and study it quite extensively to be able to re know what what does, what does Tyrannosaurus need to survive, and even what kind of elements that plagued it during its time in the Mesozoic. So we could definitely use fossil records to help us understand what the Tyrannosaurus needs. Another venture to help with our perspective is to look at the animals of the day. Now while T-Rex has died out so long ago, they're not very, very close relatives, like we don't have small little tyrannosaurs running around, we do have some of their living relatives, the crocodiles and birds. We basically look, we will basically look at what, what elements these guys will have to deal with, and then we will see if, then we can use that as a, a model to see what kind of elements T-Rex would have suffered with today. Taking both of these sources into account, I have compiled a list of elements that Tyrannosaurus would most likely be vulnerable to in captivity in the 21st century. Now, mind you, the elements that Tyrannosaurus would be uh, vulnerable to is not limited by what's being presented in this video. More elements that I believe Tyrannosaurus would be vulnerable to will be discussed in future videos. One such element is called trichomyniasis. This is an infection caused by a, a parasite that infects the face and face, mouth, and esophagus. These lesions on the face are often caused are caused by the parasite and born both the soft tissue and the bone. This has actually been found in the fossil record. With these lesions going as deep as the bone, this makes the jaws very weak and make it very painful to bite, bite down on food. It will even make it difficult to breathe. On a side note, this is not to be confused with a, with a sexually transmitted disease that has, that has a similar ordeal that affects humans. This, this variety would be most likely be avian trichomoniasis. Another ailment that T-Rex would suffer from is one that is not evident in the fossil record, but considering that Tyrannosaurus are closely related to birds, this is pretty likely. And this one element is avian or bird flu. Avian flu is a viral infection that spreads amongst birds. It rarely affects humans though. It causes severe respiratory disease and death. Some of the symptoms include a runny nose, cough, sore throat, fever, headache, muscle ache, along with, other, along with other symptoms such as diarrhea and vomiting and of course respiratory difficulties. Sepsis, pneumonia, 
organ failure, and acute respiratory distress syndrome occurs in severe cases. Another possible ailment is actinomycosis. Normally this, this will affect swine and cattle, but this has been found in turkeys, so it's possible that Tyrannosaurus could be affected by it as well. It is caused by a bacterial infection of the Actinomyces bacterium, mostly, mostly happening in the jaws. In cattle, this is known as lumpy jaw. Its symptoms include pain and fever, along with infections of the face or neck area, usually localized but may spread out, loose teeth and difficulty chewing, can include uh, respiratory difficulties, weight loss, and a poor appetite. One ailment that will be a detriment to both uh, infants and adults is malassezia. What it is, is that it's a, an infection, a skin infection caused by yeast. This, this, this kind of infection would cause dermatitis and feather loss, especially, especially in this case, the feathers of young tyrannosaurs, as well as it does for birds. One other 21st century ailment that tyrannosaurs would be vulnerable to is avian pox. Avian pox is a viral infection caused by any variety of avian pox viruses, causing lesions on the body, both external and internal. The outside lesion rashes are called dry pox, and form lots of scab-like warts, most prominent in the face and legs. Inside lesions are called wet pox, and form small yellow lesions in the throat and mouth, almost like pus in it. This can cause a loss of appetite, thirst, difficulty breathing, weight loss, and weakness. Now, like I mentioned before, the ailments that Tyrannosaurus would face in the 21st century that it would be vulnerable to is not limited to these five elements. There are definitely other diseases that would affect Tyrannosaurus negatively. Those will be discussed about in future videos. When these elements do happen, it's best to know on how to be able to treat these elements. And it goes as follows. With trichomyonis, you will need to use anti-protozoan med medications in order to help treat it. This is definitely because that life form that causes is a protozoan. And of course, you will need to keep the, the infected Tyrannosaurus isolated because they could be able to spread it by no, touch, rubbing each other with their snouts, which is a speculated behavior that scientists think Tyrannosaurus might have done due to the nerve endings in, that are found in their skulls. The treatments will need to be applied as soon as possible, at least as soon as the animal has been diagnosed with it. If, you, if the animal has been treated very late, then the jaws will be weak. And that will mean that you will need to give it soft food in order for it to eat. Treatment of avian flu may vary depending on the type of virus. In most cases, treatment will include a variety of antiviral medications. These types of drugs can reduce the severity and duration of the symptoms if taken within 48 hours of onset. In treating actinomycosis, it will need to be done with surgical debridement and administration of penicillin or other antibiotics. Basically, the goal of this is to kill off the bacteria to stop the, the spread of the lesion. It will also require additional detoxification and, and rest restorative th therapy. In treating malesthesia, or better known as dandruff, Treatments will include antifungal shampoos or sprays, along with moisturizing the skin and feathers. It's also an interesting to note that other feathered dinosaurs in the fossil record have actually been shown to suffer from this ailment, so it's not too far off to think that Tyrannosaurus rex chicks would have suffered this too. With avian pox, there's not exactly a treatment available for it. However, it can be healed up naturally with time. You will need to be able to isolate the infected individuals from the healthy ones, 
and support them, support them with vitamins, fluids, antibiotics, and ointments to speed up the week to weeks long process. Although, if it is getting worse, you may need to fall back to removing the pox. This will need to be done when they're sedated, of course. For the dry pox, the, the, po the lesions that are outside the body, you need to use tweezers to remove the wart-like lesions until they're all out. Then use an antiseptic ointment and iodine to cover the wounds to heal them. With the wet pox, the ones the internal would, would most likely require draining. Again, only remove it if the condition of the warts is extremely bad. While there are treatments for all these ailments for animals in the 21st century, unfortunately, this is not always guaranteed they will be for the best. Especially since uh, there are occasions where individual animals or even whole species have allergic or a bad reaction to several elements. Like how some people don't react well to penicillin and stuff, things like that. So. With, with an unknown, with an unknown to your animal like Tyrannosaurus, this is definitely possible. Before you have had to do these sort of treatments, or at least limit this sort of thing from happening, you'll need to do preventions. Some of these preventions are mostly going to be due to biosecurity. For example, near the ent entrances and exits of, of the in and out of the holding facilities for Tyrannosaurus and such, Especially for behind the scenes, you will need foot baths filled with an uh, antiseptic solution so that whenever you walk, whenever you go in, you don't accidentally bring something in. Such measures would definitely help with the diseases like avian pox and even trichomyosis. And you also got to make certain you have good hygiene. Hand sanitizers in areas would help help you not accidentally give anything. And obviously washing your hands, especially when you deal with their food. And also make certain that everything is all swept, mopped when they need to be. And definitely use anti-sected anti sprays and such. And you also gotta make certain that certain pests don't come in. Like make certain that it's rodent free. While rodents are definitely an issue, birds will actually be the bigger issue for your Tyrannosaurus. Since T-Rex and birds are closely related, there's a lot of diseases that they will share with birds, several of which I fact mentioned earlier. These will include diseases such as trichomyosis, which are, which are known to be carried by house finches and pigeons. Avian flu has also been known to be carried by migrating birds. And of course, avian pox is also carried by birds too, especially when they come in contact with their fecal material. Measures you will need to take on this on this ordeal is to try to prevent birds from staying there all the time, or at least be able to roost there. You need to include um, things such as glass needles, which will prevent the birds from making nests. Also, uh, owl decoys, which would you, which would help with uh, deterring birds from those areas. But even then, this is this is all, these don't always work. Sometimes birds have been known to see through these and just go past them. While these would definitely be helpful, there is a third option that I will include here, which will actually be, I think, would be the best thing to you to try to limit the amount of birds occurring in the Tyrannosaurus exhibit. One that will not only help with deterring birds, but it will be pretty entertaining for the guests and probably even a little bit enriching for the Tyrannosaurus. One such idea is falconry. For those of you who don't know, falconry is basically the, uh, the t training and keeping of birds of prey often even having them flying around in, ex in exercises. Now, this will definitely seem a little bizarre, but, it, but in actual fact, airports actually use falconers and their birds of prey to, to, 
fly to fly around do the demonstrations on airports so that many birds would actually stay away from the airports because if birds got got get sucked up into the jet engines of a plane it's not pretty with this in mind we can use the syrup principle to keep birds away from the tyrannosaurus enclosure and as i said before it would be very entertaining for the guests and it would be quite enriching for the tyrannosaurus to watch a, a falconry section go around although just make certain that the falconry session is done at least close enough so that other wild birds can see it and stay away from the bird from the vertebrae but also not too close to the enclosure so that the t-rex doesn't figure out how to chomp a, fal a falcon or bird of prey in flight other means of professions would be like in the case of of avian fox you'll definitely need to vaccinate your chicks and adults from from the from the disease research on this will need to be done also you'll need to be able to control biting insects since well while I mentioned before, avian fox can't be spread through bird poop. It can most like it's most likely spread through bite of biting insects, such as mosquitoes, along with other bird-based bird-based uh, diseases. So, controlling uh, flying insects, especially with non-toxic means or means that will not detriment the Tyrannosaurus's health, will definitely need to be included. The more you dig into this. The more you, one realizes that there's a lot of things that one needs to consider when, when looking after the health concerns of Tyrannosaurus Rex. But health concerns is only just the beginning. Other, other means, especially on uh, Tyrannosaurus' welfare, would include things such as nutrition, the environment, enrichment, and behavioral needs. So let's get into that. As one would know, Tyrannosaurus Rex is a full carnivore, so car so Tyrannosaurus would definitely need to be fed a lot of meat. But this will definitely be one heck of a challenge. While probably easier, purchasing large amounts of carcasses and um, bags of processed meat would probably be pretty expensive in the long run, and it will probably won't always be available. One uh, solution that uh, one would need to consider in being able to make certain you have enough meat for Tyrannosaurus, especially, especially for Tyrannosaurus, is to be able to raise uh, feeder animals. Like how we do with uh, snakes and monitor lizards and other uh, carnivorous reptiles today, we would feel like we would raise rats, mice, maybe even guinea pigs and rabbits to be able to, to, be able to satisfy their, their needs. In the case of T-Rex, livestock will probably need to be considered. Like that includes like cattle, sheep, goats, pigs. You'll definitely need to consider raising those animals. Having either having a a, a connection or a relationship with a, a farm or a ranch to be able to help you supply them, or you should uh, raise them yourself. Like, cattle would definitely be pretty, be pretty good. They're pretty large, but it take, it'll take but you'll, it'll take a while for the herd to be replenished. So, but I would definitely recommend the best feeder animal to raise for feeding uh, Tyrannosaurus are pigs. Because pigs are, pigs, pigs get pretty big, not as big as uh, cattle, but it's definitely big enough to help uh, feed T-Rex. And they also reproduce very fast. Basically, the gestation, gestation rate of a pig is, as a farmer would say, three months, three weeks, and three days. Not exact, but that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. And you could be able to produce uh, multiple litters of probably like a six to a dozen pigs every time. So you could be able to help supply feeder animals for Tyrannosaurus. Regardless on whether you use whole, car whole carcasses or processed meat to feed the Tyrannosaurus, you, you will definitely need to feed a lot of meat to Tyrannosaurus. While the amount of meat would depend on the size, age, and health of the individual Tyrannosaurus, 
Like for example, adolescent T-Rex will definitely need a lot of meat since they will grow five pounds a day. As a general rule of thumb, you would need to feed about 5% of the Tyrannosaurus body weight per week. For example, a 10 ton adult would need about 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds of food a week. In short terms, that's basically around like a cow or two horses worth of meat. A T-Rex should not be overfed or underfed, but this would lead to health problems and behavioral issues. But having occasional fast days, which has been done for carnivore, large carnivores in captivity, would probably be a good idea to use. Young Tyrannosaurs are recommended to be fed a large variety of small animals such as rabbits, guinea pigs, and uh, feeder rats, and insects that are rich in protein, ideally fitted with calcium and nutritional supplements to keep them happy and healthy, especially to keep them from developing metabolic bone disease, which has plagued a lot of young carnivores growing up. When it comes to habitat, Tyrannosaurus lived in a variety of habitats in North America back in its time. Most likely it preferred open areas with some forest cover, pretty much open woodlands to savanna habitats. In captivity, a Tyrannosaurus will most likely need to be provided a habitat that mimics it, similar to like how we would do for lions. You'll have to have the enclosure probably run equal to six American football fields for one solitary of nearly 12, 12 and a half meter long Tyrannosaurus. And make sure that humidity it could at least be or similar, similar to the Amazon if if not close. And terrain will probably most, most likely be similar to habitats done in Louisiana. Which is pretty said to be pretty similar to what the Hell Creek Formation was like. And also make certain that the habitat, just like just like in this uh, illustration, is on is on top of a hill, or at least has a structure where the Tyrannosaurus Rex can stand on. I'll explain. I'll explain. I'll explain later. As far as enrichment goes, this is where it actually gets really interesting and even challenging. For for me, for one thing, Tyrannosaurus is said to have a strong sense of smell probably akin to, if not stronger than that of a bloodhound. They also have a, a heightened sense of hearing, similar to that of elephants, which helps them be able to listen to low frequencies. Also, they have a superb eyesight, similar to, if not surpassing that, of birds of prey, which is why I mentioned about having, having an enclosure on a hill or an elevated, elevated structure for the Tyrannosaurus I mentioned earlier. But, what's even more curious, is that according to recent paleontological studies, especially on uh, relate, relating them to that of birds, it turns out that Tyrannosaurus could perhaps be severely intelligent, have intelligence akin to that of baboons, basically like primate intelligence. So this definitely shows that Tyrannosaurus is obviously highly intelligent and curious. This will mean that you will definitely need to be very creative when enriching the animals and make sure you have a large variety of enrichment items and enrichment ideas. With enrichment items, you'll need like logs, junkyard cars, well, at least car models they need to sanitize, large tires, barrels, and, and, prob and probably even some, I some inventive ideas like this little cage ball that is in the illustration and there are also a lot of other forms of enrichment like scent like make you can drag like a uh, hides or hairs or fucking poop of prey animals in their enclosure to enrich their sense of smell and of course the elevated platforms like I mentioned earlier on a side note on the enrichment items they will need to be rotated regularly in order to not have the animals bored. 
And also, you probably need to get them cleaned up every now and then, just so, like, if they have anything, they won't accidentally pass it on to the other animals. While the fossil record doesn't give us everything we want to know about their behavior, it has given us some clues to how they might have behaved. With both the, uh, looking at the cranial part of their skulls, and even and even looking at uh, tracks left left behind by groups, it's reasonable to assume that Tyrannosaurus rex are social creatures. With this in mind, when raising uh, Tyrannosaurus chicks, they will need to be raised with other individuals of their own kind, either as with siblings or with a future mate. And this is basically to help them become more socially functional. When raised with other members of their own kind, they would develop social skills, which would make them more compatible for breeding purposes. Also, social interactions with other members of their own kind would count as behavioral enrichment for the Tyrannosaurus. While Tyrannosaurus are intelligent and social, that doesn't mean that they are not prone to aggression. The fossil record has shown us that Tyrannosaurus would fight each other every now and then. Especially, this is most likely probably due to territory or perhaps a social unrest like it is in several social species such as chimpanzees and hyenas. So this is definitely needs to be taken into consideration, especially when you try to introduce adults together whether for breeding purposes or otherwise. With T-Rex chicks, it is thought that when they are born, they are born three feet long and around the size of a small dog. And as they grow, it is most likely that as they grow, they will become more dangerous. And I would say the best time to separate the keepers from the chicks, at least put a barrier between them, would be when they are about 4 feet tall and 8 feet long, and probably weigh a couple hundred pounds. This seems to be the minimum size required for them to be able to become a threat to the keepers. As you can see, taking care of a Tyrannosaurus in captivity would definitely be one heck of a challenge. But as a Paleo Zookeeper, one must be able to face these challenges head on and make them work especially for the well-being for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrant's Lizard King. Boy, this was the longest video I have done for this channel. But it makes sense considering it's about the one of the most popular and famous dinosaurs of all. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. It was definitely such a great deal to make. And I look forward to making more videos on, on, on the topic of Tyrannosaurus. Thank you to Keenan Taylor for all the commissions he has done for me thus far. He is, his artwork has helped me a lot with my videos, and I definitely thank him for that. Along with Tally Source for him offering his illustrations, even doing some illustrations for me every now and then for my videos, and I have to thank him as well. Check check both of them out on on Deviant Arts. You will not be disappointed, and and especially Keenan Taylor's YouTube channel. He does a really good job. Also, I would like to thank YouTube's official cassowary, George. He was able to actually help me out with a lot of research material on Tyrannosaurus, especially on health concerns. Thank you, George. You really helped me out. I look forward to working with you again in the future. If you like what I do and want to support it, please like and subscribe for, for my YouTube channel and, and join me and join me on my Patreon page and become my Patreon. Every, every little bit helps in order to help me make these videos. On the next video, we will be talking about how to raise the foals of the Calicothere Moropus. I hope you all have a grand day. Adios.